Hello everyone, this is All Logarithm Sequel, with a new production. And this is, in fact, part 6, the 6th installment, in Continued Fraction Expansions. So, without further ado, let's, let's get started. So, Continued Fraction Expansions, part 6. So, in fact, uh, I wanted to present my own extension of what Professor Loya talked about, and, and, and we saw it in the previous part, part 5. So, basically, let's do a quick review of that, shall we? Uh, this is an excerpt from that book we were reading. By the way, a very good book, I must say. Really, uh... It's quite brilliant, and and it's it's completely free as well. That's the best part, honestly. But you can see some of these really beautiful formulae. See, it it really shows how if you put in the time and energy, uh, there's really a lot of beautiful things, a lot of wonderful, awe-inspiring topics and and uh, formulae and ideas and mathematics that you can find. Um, and I encourage you to do so, obviously. Uh, of course, if you're, if you're watching this channel, then probably you already know that, <laughs> thankfully. But anyways, the idea is... Uh, I wanted to sort of direct your attention to this concise formula at the top here, which is 1, uh, one over alpha 1 minus 1 over alpha 2. And it gives a somewhat concise way of writing that in one single term. So we, what we can do f with this is, basically, I, I considered how we can apply this to the alternating harmonic series in a similar way as Professor Loya does, except not directly tied to continued fractions, but more generally talking about uh, infinite series in general. So let's see what we get, because there are, in fact, some, some very good results. So our approaches in this series, we're first going to consider, of course, the alternating harmonic series. I'll talk briefly about that. And then we're going to... Well, yes, but but in addition to that, actually, I've already talked about that before as a thing. But the point is, in addition to that, what we'll be doing is uh, applying parentheses, and we'll basically be condensing this formula in order to get some other related formulas that converge to the same number. And as many of you will recall this formula at the top, this alternating harmonic series, it's called, it in fact converges to one of my favorite numbers, the log of 2. In other words, the natural logarithm of 2. So, very, very interesting stuff. So, without further ado, let's, let's get started. Let's, let's uh, apply these parentheses. So, this is one method of simply uh, taking consecutive terms and simplifying them, condensing them, to basically get a result that is a non-alternating infinite series. And so you can see the derivation right up there. Basically it's uh, we have 1 half plus a 12th plus 1 30th plus 1 over uh, 42 or excuse me, uh, plus 1 over 56, etc. Et and uh, we can write this, of course, as a generalization, as a sigma notation, so we get it's the sigma of 1 over 4k squared plus 6k plus 2. And that is our sort of condensed version of this infinite series. And what we're going to do, what we're going to develop, is in fact a list of equivalent summations. So we start with this alternating harmonic series, which I remind you is conditionally convergent. And what that means is that if we take the absolute value of every term, and sum it all up, sum all of those up, what we result in, what that results in, is actually a divergent series, which is, of course, the harmonic series, as many of you recall. Uh, so, in other words, the fact that this particular series converges relies on, or depends on, the condition of the terms being alternating which is rather intuitive, so we call that a conditionally convergent infinite series, as many of you recall. That's just a quick review, of course, of uh, calculus. 
But the idea is that we just got this new series, which is in fact a P-series. It's a convergent P-series. Uh, and I just wrote that up. It's 1 over 4k squared plus 6k plus 2 in the denominator. And, you know, many of you, you know, who have taken a calculus class would be able to prove rather easily that this, uh, actually there are multiple ways of proving it, now that I think about it. Um, you could, you could probably use a ratio test, or you could just use a theorem involving a p-series, or you could uh, do a limit comparison test, or a direct comparison test. So there are clearly different convergence tests that that many of us have learned, many of you have learned, um, to show that this series converges. But what's interesting, even more interesting, is that we know this particular one converges to the same number to which s converges. So it is, in fact, the natural logarithm of 2, my, one of my favorite numbers. And so that's the thing that I find rather profoundly interesting, in fact. Um, in many calculus courses, they don't really tell you, they, they don't very often tell you the value to which p-series converge, if they do converge. So you might have to determine which of them converge and which, which of them diverge, which is one thing, and that's all well and good. But another thing, another thing entirely is, is to be able to say, you know, what is the value to which it converges? And for this one, we know. So it's very interesting. I, I think maybe this should be shared more. Maybe, maybe people should, should talk about it more, especially in a, uh, a math class, I would argue. But, uh, you know, in all these, so basically this is another, uh, and this is our second approach, in fact, so we're applying the parentheses in a different place. So we have 1 minus the quantity of a half minus a third, minus the quantity of a fourth minus a fifth, minus the quantity, and we keep applying it that way. Obviously, we're, again, finding common denominators, de denominators uh, very similarly to the previous approach, and we end up with this nice, this other somewhat nice, elegant sort of formula, which is 1 minus a sixth, minus a twentieth, minus 1 over 42, minus 1 over 72, minus, etc., etc., etc. So, in this other approach, what we're doing is, well, what, what we get as a result is basically a, uh, a kind of a different convergent series, where basically what we do is we start with 1, and we actually keep decrementing things, uh, s certain fractions, fr in other words, fractional values from 1, and we're sort of decreasing the value, so to speak, until we get to, or un until at least we're converging to, a different value, and we know, of course, it's equal to s, so that value, in fact, to which it con converges, or ends up, you know, approximating, is the natural log of 2. So again, log 2. Very, very interesting stuff. And so what we do is, uh, we're going to add this to the list, of course. Why wouldn't we? But first, I guess I, I should just say the, the condensed form, the sigma notation form, first of all. So it's 1 minus the sigma, k starting at 1, going to infinity, of 1 over 4k squared plus 2k. So again, another convergent p-series, is obtained, and we in fact know that these converge to the same value, so that's very interesting, of course. So all these sums that we put in our uh, list of convergence, or list, uh, list of equivalency, <laughs> uh, converge to the same number. So, is that cool or what? Well, of course, very interesting stuff. Uh, but beyond that, we can now construct another series, which is the sigma from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 over k times k plus 1. Uh, and we can write out each of the terms of this, which is to say it's 1 half plus a sixth plus a twelfth plus a twentieth plus 1 over 30, plus 1 over 42, plus 1 over 54, plus 1 over 72, plus da da da, etc, etc. And what you'll notice is that every other term of this new series, it, it, we're basically just interlacing terms from S1 and S2 in order to obtain this. And in, in fact, converges exactly to 1. And you can, you can prove this if you want, 
you can have a nice formal proof. I, I'm not going to present a formal proof, but the idea is to consider evaluating. Uh, let me edit that. It's not S1 minus S2 plus 1, is it? It is, in fact, um, Oh, in fact, it is. It is. My apologies. It is S1 minus S2 plus 1. Because, yeah, the idea is that we're taking a term, in other words, every other term is from S1, and the terms in between are from S2, so we're kind of interlacing them, right? So you can verify that, if you want, but uh, it should be the case that, you know, taking terms this way converges to one. You can check me and correct me, but, um, yeah, it's certainly very interesting. So, so now we get this new, nice, concise formula, which is to say that the sigma of 1 over k squared plus k, that whole structure, that whole quantity, converges to 1. Very interesting, in fact, right? This is yet another thing that they don't tell you in most, in my, yeah, at least they didn't tell me in my calc class. I suppose I can't speak for everyone, but I, I find it to be very uh, unlikely that people hear this in their calc class, which is a bit disappointing because they talk about infinite series. But I just wanted to, to make that point, to make, make this point, because uh, it's certainly very interesting, and I, I hope that, that 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 you see uh, the, the the beauty in this and the the, the well the what's the word I'm, I'm I'm having trouble finding the words to describe it uh, but but it's it's just kind of a a nice pleasant thing <laughs> you know it's a it's a very interesting enjoyable sort of thing so I I hope you enjoy it to say the least. But um, thank you very much for watching. That's that's most of what I present, what I would like to present in this video. This might just be a part A. I'm still kind of working on uh, sorting through additional series and and doing my own extensions of Professor Loya's very good textbook. But again, uh, thank you very much for watching. And and if you'd like to subscribe, then please do. <laughs> and as always, uh, don't hesitate to provide any questions, corrections. Or, or, or your own extensions, better yet, or some ideas about future topics. Um, yes. So, other than that, thank you very much for watching. In fact, one thing I was going to look into, I might give you a bit of a sneak peek, I was going to look into was basically uh, using similar techniques on other alternating series, not just the alternating harmonic series, as good as that is, of course, but maybe some other alternating series, like if we chose... Uh, a sub k equal to the square root of k, or something like that. Uh, which, to my knowledge, is a different conversion alternating series. Uh, well, that's assuming that we get... In other words, I'm talking about the sigma of negative 1 to the k plus 1 over the square root of k, if that makes any sense. From k equals uh, 1 to infinity. Um, so that whole structure correct me if I'm wrong, but should be a convergent alternating, actually conditionally convergent series. And I was going to study sort of what does that converge to, and can we manipulate it, can we get some other polynomials. Maybe you can do that as an exercise, uh, or see what you come up with, you know, in applying these ideas to other alternating series. Um, so yeah, thank you very much, and, and certainly we'll continue this in a future installment. Alright, thanks for watching.